Hi. All right, good, 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 good. So, wow, you men in, man in black? Uh, yeah, you know, look, I had to come out in the turtleneck. You know, it's, it's been crazy cold in Cali, so uh, I figured I'd come out with a turtleneck. How often do you see a turtleneck in Los Angeles? Uh, basically never. I know, right? So, yeah, I'm bringing some of that East Coast uh, flavor, even though I'm not from the East Coast, to L.A. Saying you give me, you kind of give me superhero type, action hero vibes. Is that why you're out tonight? Well, you know what? That's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get, you know, go from uh, from hosting to uh, becoming a superhero, right? Yeah, Wakanda or Nigeria forever. <laughs> yes. So we, we, you guys might not realize this, but we're both Nigerian. Yeah. So the Nigeria yeah. forever. Yeah, I feel like I mean. I've if, been saying Niger forever. Oh so yeah. All the Nigerians, I go, I go, Niger forever. You know, Akata doesn't know what yeah. that means. <laughs> <laughs> Akata's like, what is, what is Niger? <laughs> Niger is short for Nigeria. Yeah. So I know you must be extra hype because of when we're still on the Wakanda wave, yeah. and people are hype about four American Ninja Warrior. Yeah, four, yeah, four weeks trades have been pretty cool. You know, it's really cool too to see. You know what? You know, obviously this cast has done uh, the directing, the acting, uh, and the success that it's gotten. Um, you know, it, it's changing the way people see quote unquote black films, and and hopefully we can eradicate the black films um, and it's just a great film and so uh, you know you look at that production it's amazing I mean I had to go see it twice yeah I, I'm sure yeah. I actually I have a great crossover idea I feel like the Dora Milaje should be an American Ninja Warrior they're warriors you guys deal with American I, you know I, I like that you know the crossover between having some of them on American Ninja Warrior would be pretty cool so you know for our celebrity edition maybe that's something we'll consider so, and then on the Lupita, other Lupita, listen, Lupita. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and on the other end, maybe, you know, I could be one of the action heroes in the uh, the next Black Panther. Ryan Coogler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, yeah. so before I let you go, I have to remind you because I made a request when we last saw each other at the ESPYs yeah. that you were supposed to hook me up with a husband. Yes. How's well, that going? You know what? I, I actually uh, went out there uh, and I worked hard for you, too. And what ended up happening is because of global warming, the 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 men supply is running pretty dry. What? <laughs> I should find your wife <laughs> and repeat to her what you just said to me. Hold on, global warming and <laughs> and, and men are. <laughs> what does that have to do with no fact? The fact that I don't have a ring. <laughs> Oh, there's just a drought. It's just a drought. That's all. That's all right. That's I'm done with. Thing. I'm done with you. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah. okay. Now, really, before I let you go. Yeah. So you've been athlete, you understand how important it is when you have that moment and get your award. Yeah. If you became an Oscar winner mm -hmm. and someone took that from you, took away your Oscar, what would you do? Well, I mean, obviously you'd have to figure out what, why it was being taken away. I mean, I, you know, that's, that's a hard question to ask, but if it was unjustly taken away, I'd be upset. I mean, I'd fight for it. I mean, I'd do everything I could to fight for it, especially now in a time where you know, especially when there's social pressure outside, people are quick to react, um, quick to remove, quick to fire. Um, you know, I think one thing for sure, uh, and I'll say this, it's probably not answering your question, I think our society as a whole, we really need to learn how to forgive, and people are forgetting the essence of forgiveness, and forgiveness is giving up the hope that the past could be any different. Doesn't mean that there aren't consequences. Um, and forgiveness, again, doesn't mean that there are not consequences, but I just feel like everyone's so quick to to, to judge people and to say, that's it, you don't deserve this, you don't get this, you lose your livelihood, and hopefully that narrative changes soon because forgiveness is giving up the hope that the past could be any different. You're a better person than I am because I would not forgive anyone who took my Oscar. <laughs> but okay, well, yeah. I'm done with you. Okay. Thank All you. Right. All right, cool. Good to see you. Hi, Vivian, nice to meet you. First off, you look dapper. Thanks. Love the outfit. Okay, so you just retired yes. and you're on the red carpet here in Hollywood. I mean, Kobe just won an Oscar. I feel like you might have some, do you have something brewing that we need to know about? Uh, you know, we're working on our project right now. Tough Juice, my biography, uh, me, Mark Wahlberg. Uh, we got some stuff coming this, at the end of this year, so looking forward to that. I know all of you comments be super hyped for it. Yeah, you know, it really is, you know, my wife, all of us, you know, we put our heart and soul into the project. Uh, we just want to make sure it's right when we put it out there because, you know, the quality of what you put out there is very important. And we want to make sure it's authentic. Right. And is, is this your wife over here hiding in the corner? Yeah, she's, all, she, she's, she's my everything, you know what I mean? She's my, my publicist, my wife, the mother of my children, everything. She does it all. She holds it down, huh? Yeah, strong woman, strong woman, absolutely. Okay, so you also said that Kobe Bryant is 
the greatest of this generation. Why do you think that? I mean, why wouldn't you call yourself that? Hey, look, you know, you look at his credentials and you look at his worth ethic and, you know, I'm a guy that, you know, learned a lot from this experience of being under his wing for a year. And I'm a lifetime friend of his, long after basketball, obviously. And I just watched his preparation. I never seen anything like it. Uh, his resume is second to none. I feel you. That was very humble. So I'm going to put on you that you might be the next Oscar winner NBA player. I hope so. I hope so. It's a good feeling. It, it, it'd be a good look. And we need more of us out there like that. Appreciate it. Carly, I got a question for you. If you were to win an Oscar and someone stole it, what would you do? I, I, you know what? I'll get a replica made just to make sure I have one. You know what I mean? Like, get two of everything I love. You know what I mean? If you knew a guy that actually had an Oscar that wasn't his, what would you do? <laughs> I wouldn't honor him. I wouldn't look at him the same. You know, so why are you hold somebody else's trophy that you didn't earn? You know what I mean? So I definitely wouldn't look at that person the same. How did you feel when Kobe won his Oscar? What made, what made you feel like and think about? You know what? I'm still happy for him because during his farewell tour, he came to Sacramento and we had a conversation. And he was talking about him uh, just making that seamless transition into writing. And everybody was just in awe that, you know, somebody, one of the greatest players ever to play the game of basketball, would want to be in that space. But for him to be rewarded immediately with the Deer Basketball, I thought it was just amazing that he put the world on notice like, look, I'm here. I'm serious about my craft, just like he did about basketball, and he's going to be a force to be reckoned with for years to come. Hi, hi, beautiful. Nice to meet. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're calling me beautiful. Like, look at you. Have you seen yourself? <laughs> I didn't look in the mirror today. <laughs> well, I've got to say, this is literally the best time to be a black superhero. A black superhero? Are you kidding me? I was like, what a time to be alive. Hello. It's 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 a it's a wave. A shift has happened, and I think uh, with with shows like Black Lightning and movies like Black. Panther these are just the first of many to come yeah and I'm excited and honored to be a part of the wave really and I mean you're not just a part you're a leader in this field because oh, you. you are one of the few black queer characters on TV and you know you have superpowers no big deal you must have little girls coming up to you so much yeah the outpour of love on my social media from young black lesbians uh, it has been you know just really emotional and inspiring for me to see that I'm inspiring them and it, it, it pushes me to want to keep going and you know dig even deeper to who my character is and, and reveal more of that but the outpour of love of of the women saying that they are grateful to see themselves on TV and to have that representation, representation. yeah I'm grateful that I was chosen to give a voice over to it really I am I mean, speaking of representation, I know that you were inspired by Will Smith. Yes. Have you met him yet? Has, uh, have you, you told him? I'm from Philly. I met him a couple years ago. Um, I met him when I first started out in Philly, and I, I told him he was my inspiration and that I was working with his acting coach, and it'll be cool to run into him again. It'll happen soon. Yeah. I mean, it could happen at an Oscar. Yes. It could. Very. Yeah, right. If you, okay, let's say you and Will Smith are cast in a movie. Ooh and you're Oscar nominated, is he the first person you mentioned in your Oscar speech or do you yeah, drop someone? like the third or the fourth person. I might mention God and my mama first. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. And then I'll get to Willie from Philly. But no, yeah, like he's such a huge inspiration. I'm literally here in LA following my dreams because we come from the same neighborhood and I saw him, you know, become all that he has become and it's been such a huge inspiration for me, yeah. Now you get to return the favor for other young girls. I do, I do, and it's it's all about reaching back and, and, and teaching you know those who are coming up after me what what what's been passed down. So speaking of teaching, so Lara Croft in this movie in Tomb Raider, she's a brave 21 year old. She what is. would you tell yourself when you were 21? I mean, you might be 21 now. I don't know. You look so <laughs> young. You're so pretty, you, you could be. You know, it's on crack. <laughs> <laughs> what would I tell myself at 21? I would tell myself to be patient. Yeah that everything happens in due timing. Due timing, that's a good one. I think I needed that one today. <laughs> well, thanks so much, it's so nice Thank to meet you. you. Nice to meet you too, pleasure. Here you are. Here's the tomb right yeah, there. We're in the tomb. <laughs> we're in the tomb. It's one of my favorite sets. Yeah. It's so cool to be there. What a set. Absolutely. Where was this actually? Where the, so uh, we, we were five months in Cape Town. By oh. the way, it's the most beautiful city. But And then uh, they built um, uh, in, in a studio in, in, in South Africa, they yeah. built the tomb. And I must say, I mean, even I kind of just assumed that a lot of these big um, 
action films nowadays, they rely a lot on CGI and sure. green screen. And our director was very stubborn on <laughs> to bring that kind of more authentic feel. He wanted yeah. it to be set builds, yeah. which meant like as an actor, yeah. I got to go in and just be like blown away. I was the detail in this work was incredible. And a fellow Scandinavian, that must have been fun. Did you have sort of like a? a yeah, a, I mean, <laughs> we're able to speak Norwegian, and Swedish to one another, but only when it's kind of us in a room, because otherwise it would be quite rude. Yes, I, I understand. I understand. But maybe you had a similar sensibility. And I know you were familiar with his films, which yes, made it was nice as well. I was. Well, this is terrific. I mean, first of all, it's a you know it's a great action film, but so often these kinds of films. That's all there is. You know, there's the action and there's all of that. But there's a lot of intimacy here, too. I mean, talk a little bit about the father-daughter relationship, because I think that's an important theme here. Definitely. And I think that relationship, especially when I was introduced to what they want to do with this film, when I met the director and the producers, is that the father-daughter relationship is really at the core of the story. And you could pull that one out and put it any genre and it would be effectful and something that you will want to follow. And, and that meant that I thought like, okay, so we can now step into this universe. And of course, you know, I grew up watching Angelina Jolie make her into an icon on the screen with, with the films back then, but we can make something uh, that can be relatable for a 2018 audience, but that will be something new, uh, a very kind of human uh, connection to this character and, and her journey that she goes on to become the very well-known action hero that she of course is. Um, I understand you actually loved the Tomb Raider games when you were growing up. Yeah, I mean, the t Lara Croft and the Tomb Raider games have been quite groundbreaking. I mean, it was the first female protagonist yeah. in a video game. I was a nine, ten year old girl standing in the living room, like, you know, so curious. Yeah. I wanted to be part and try this adventure on with finally was a girl that I, you know, was could relate to and and and, and I was a bit too young, so I would I'm a bit scared to be honest, to play the games. I tried. Uh, but I revisited them later in my young teens. One of the things that's great and it's happening this year, a lot of films are coming out and this is probably one of the strongest ones, where we're seeing strong female character yeah. leading a film. And as an actress today, with all that's going on, Me Too, et cetera, et cetera, it must be great to be such a key player in this whole thing. And you must be very proud of that. I am. I, I, I'm, I'm, I was proud of everyone involved who decided to make sure that these films need to be come up to the surface. I. Whilst filming this, uh, or actually just wrapping it up, I went and saw Wonder Woman. I was just floored to finally see these kind of battle scenes with just these women. Turn it on its head like that and me realizing I was growing up thinking that I would never see anything like it. Mm -hmm. And I really think that in the times we're in now, it's wonderful that it's such creativity going on and people are so hungry for these stories that sadly haven't been shined a light upon before. So this, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very proud of being part of this. We know there's a lot of movie magic, but watching this film and knowing a thing or two about what goes on behind the scenes, um, physical training, I know that you had to go through a lot of that for this movie. Talk a little bit about that, because I bet you went through quite a bit. Again, you know, <laughs> Yes, the pure excitement of me growing up loving adventure films and always been curious what it's like to shoot these kind of action sequences, that's one thing. But also as, you know, going back to why I wanted to do this film as an actor, I really, you know, I love to find ways of stepping away from myself, you know, form a character. And it was so in story, um, already described in the script, what a feminine young woman she is, but she has this, phys you know, strong, physical aspect of her um, um, and and I, I wanted it to be as it is she, you, you show that she she loves to work out she she's on her bike in the beginning of the film and that makes you believe that if this film now is set more in a reality closer to ours it needs to be plausible mm -hmm. that she now is thrown out on this adventure that she can pull herself up these cliffs or the the bomber plane or that she can even try and take on with a bit of her cleverness of course um, um, uh, even a man that is obviously stronger and bigger than her. Absolutely, and even the scene uh, with chasing the boys in Hong Kong, whether that was Hong Kong or not, or it looked yeah, like Hong it looked Kong. Like, even and Dan Daniel Wu, who plays uh, 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 Lou in our film, who who's from Hong Kong, yeah. he was even a he stood there in our set piece in Cape Town, and I was like, oh my god, this looks like home. It was pretty amazing. It was almost three sixty, and we had about. 
350 to 400 uh, Chinese extras in South Africa. Three, two, one, action. <laughs> That's a wrap.